On this episode, I want to talk about spiritual realities and identity being key and very much well framed. First, there is a story from Nigeria of a pastor that wanted to be like TB Joshua. He claimed himself to be like TB Joshua and unfortunately, it landed him in hot waters to a point where he's actually arrested and he might have actually lost his mind, went mental because he, he didn't want to deal or face up to spiritual realities. The second one is of a Moja Love uh, presenter who was a Sangoma and he ran a show called Fake Gobela. And so I want to talk about these two shows because I think they do emulate something, but out of them is this idea of spiritual realities. If you remember back when I was having a conversation with Nkulma Shavani, there was this particular point we made in that video about the realities of Christian identity and how God at the end of the day is the one who has all authority. This story, it comes into effect because the first story, which being the, the, the Sangoma who passed away recently, a very young man, he did a show called Fake Kovela. And this show, this Fake Kovela thingy, it was tackling people that might have initiated others like Sangoma initiates and stuff like that that might have had issues with them or their consultation didn't go as they claim. And so therefore, he ran this show, way, but in the presentation of the story, they didn't state that they wanted it was an expose of that person they only stated it as if the show was framed as they were just interviewing the particular governor and so forth and so this ruffled a lot of feathers now after that this caused an issue because now he they say after a short illness when i read one particular article they said he passed away from a from a certain Ill illness and so forth now thank you very much again for the person that actually passed this particular story to me wouldn't have seen it also, uh, they said uh, he passed away from a, a very short illness. So many, this guy was as healthy as healthy can be. And so this has brought up a certain level of fear to say, so therefore the governors that he was talking about were not fake because they might have done something. They might have numbered back. They might have back and dealt with him numbered. That's how a lot of people were kind of putting it to say there might have been something that was done from Ndumba's perspective that actually puts forward this particular story or that says that this is why his life ended. And so there's that fear that's kind of like rattling the social media space to say he might have pissed off the wrong person. And that person might have not taken it well to a point where they did something about it. In this conversation, being it that he was healthy, right? That's the thing that they're actually taking. The story that, the second story that I wanted to bring up, I had actually recorded a video. I just never actually published it. Nigerian prophet who thought himself to be the next TB Joshua. He even made a post about it on Facebook, on his Facebook page. Now, this guy has recently been arrested. And the arrest, the reason for why he was arrested is because he was attempting some of this diabolic deliverance stuff and it, it landed him in so much trouble. He was greater than great could be. He was the best thing that happened after sliced bread. And so he put himself out there. Remember, spiritual realities. And he decided to challenge the occultic kingdom in his village. I don't know if it was in his father's yard or what, something along those lines. So this guy, uh, there, were, there was in Dumba, uh, there was a shrine back in his village, in his father's house. And he wanted to go and confront that thing because now he had become a Christian. And now he, he, he had left all the schooling stuff that he had done and he wanted to be a pastor. So I don't know if he thought this was going to authenticate his ministry. But he went out there, he challenged, he borrowed a cutlass, machete, from the neighbor. He went to his father's house and he chopped down the shrine. 
He cut it down. He cut down the shrine. He cut it down. He destroyed it. He went back. And he felt victorious. He's called powerful, amazing, wonderful. Next to be Joshua. He gets home. He, he gets hit by a very strange madness. Only way I can describe what happened. The story that I'm talking about, you can actually research it. It's actually very well documented. True crimes, Daniel actually did an entire story breaking down the story and how it happened, what happened. I just can't remember all the details. I just thought or oh, to add it here because of that idea there, spiritual realities. So this guy, he got hit by a certain strange madness, and this madness caused him to lose his sanity. Now he lost his sanity to a point where he took that same very machete that he borrowed and he went and he hacked his neighbor's daughter. I can't remember if he, it was his neighbor only or his neighbor's daughter only because I do remember maybe it was just too graphic the part of his daughter, the daughter passing away from me. So I only remember that traumatic part. I don't remember if he, there was another person, but I do know that there was a 15-year-old daughter in that house. And he, the, the, there's visuals out there, so be careful when you, if you try to look for the story. It, it's, a, it's very, very graphic. You know, it's a very, very graphic story. So he, he went mad. He got hit by a certain level of madness. He lost his mind, took that cutlass, and then he went and he had, and Right after he did that, the community heard about it. They found him, they beat him. And not only did they beat him, they beat him, and then they called the police for the police to come and arrest this particular guy. The, the, the story here lines in that, in that area of spiritual realities. You see, as a Christian, as a born again, the Bible says that we know God. It speaks about knowing, an intimate knowing. Ginosko. That's the Greek word that it uses. An intimate knowing. And knowing that's without doubt. The Bible then says we know that the, the Spirit then confirms with us that we are the sons of God. So which means there's a confirmation of sonship in us. And our knowledge of God, based on what the scriptures align and tell us, informs us of our position. We have spiritual realities based on our knowledge of God. Now, it's the same for people that are unbelievers. There are places if you touch, there are places if you go. Uh, I remember one particular pastor, one, he was a church member. He tested one particular pastor, I can't say who, but he tested one particular pastor. He got very angry. He was a rich guy and he was losing his money because of this pastor. And at the end of it, this pastor was just disregarding him. And so he decided to do something about it. And he started messing up with the pastor. He started messing up with the girlfriends of the pastor. Not the wife, the girlfriends. He started going around with the side chicks that the pastor had. And he started messing around with this person. Side chicks. The pastor used that to gain access, to entrance. And he hit him. That's why I'm not saying, oh, this is not like a public known story and stuff like that. Never came out. The guy died very terribly. You know, he died with a very sick illness. Why? Because he decided to engage the man in the place of his authority, which is not authority really if you think about it. But he dealt with him, Dumbikad, because he had, he had left his position of authority. He went to a place where he has no business being. There are these spiritual realities that we don't turn away from. We are not authenticating what's happening over there. We know that the devil does do things. So when people get involved in these things, there are realities that, that bring judgment. 
whether it be so that's the conversation that everybody is having on social media so i wanted to bring it back here that there are realities to being a son of god there are realities to being a person who's not born again because this type of stuff gets exposed or you are exposed to this type of things and i thought these stories are a reminder of the realities we are dealing with this the bible actually says we are known of him the Bible, when the Bible describes our relationship with God. But not only does he use that term, there is another verse that he, I, I absolutely love. He says not that we loved him. The word love, representative of choosing. Not that we chose him, but that he chose us while we were yet sinners. So, he, I learned, and then Hebrews then comes and says, he that sentifies in them, that he that, senti that is sentified are one. So, he then gives relationship to things. There are realities to our spiritual life and i think we might talk about that on saturday so be there on the live stream we'll definitely get into the details and the next and cranies of this particular subject because sometimes it doesn't get discussed enough is there a reality show with daily christian commentary uh, videos what we are talking about has realities get yourself acquainted with them don't be found without when we have god we have it all he is enough he is all, he is all i need that's our confession. The Bible says we have overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony is that he has redeemed us. When you don't have that, you leave yourself exposed to all kinds of things. And I hope these stories do teach us that. It's Ricky, and I'll see you later on. Stay blessed.